Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. I am your host, Christian. As always, joined by my co-host, Chris. You. And hoodie guy, Rye. What up? And haircut needed guy, Rye. What up? And tab whore guy, Rye. What up? Ryan is the ultimate tab whore. I don't know if people really know this. I think we might have joked about it once or twice on the show, but when you guys leave and I have to like shut everything down. Because you just fucking leave everything everywhere like animals. Yeah. Uh, I not only have to close out this, like the first page he's on with the 45 different tabs. Mm-hmm. When I exit out, he's got another fucking window open with 20 more tabs. Right. Can you do me a favor? Can you open up another tab? Hell yeah. Guardy hot stove? No. Done. Locked up. Bro. Are you okay with paying him what they paid him? Sure. I don't even know what they paid him. I really don't. I have no idea. I didn't care. Didn't care to look into it. Did not give a fuck. I don't know if he's getting 12 and a half this year. Whoa, that's a little crazy. <laughs> you noticed it or you, you didn't oh, read I about it? No, I noticed it. We got to have a quick debate on. about this. How fucked up are the McAllisters? That's why there's that no Home took Alone. so long. That's why there's no Home Alone 3. Oh, because what? They put him in uh, fantasy jail? You they know what? Don't, I don't want to hear anybody fucking text or tweet us. Or email that there is Home Alone three. Technically, there's five fucking Home Alone. Yeah, right? no, and they they're all re- sucked. And they're remaking it for Disney Plus. But guess what? After Home Alone two, Lost in New York, I don't acknowledge the existence Absolutely of any not. of those fucking movies. It's like saying that Rocky continued, and you had some other jerk off as the in right. there instead of Sylvester Stallone. Right. Okay. Yeah, because you lost, a, you left the kid in fucking Chicago. Then you, at least you remember to take him to the airport again, and then he gets on the wrong. Now, mind you, this is all pre nine eleven. You couldn't do this shit now. Right. You couldn't lose a kid in New York on a plane. They didn't really touch on it. Well, what's there to touch on? How well, that, I, I how think it's that, kind of a no, big that deal, is, dude. Is I think it's deal. kind of a big deal. Not, we are a baseball podcast. It's I mean, it is. Especially in, in... It's not important to if you. They, if, so, they tried so to eliminate, important to you. if they tried to eliminate a quarter of major league teams, then yeah, we'd have a big story. Whatever's not but, important to you, but we missile, don't talk about. But the Missaloo uh, do. paddleheads, if they, don't, if they don't play next year, is that going to affect your life? So Cashman is... Uh, where is it this year? In San Diego? So B. Cash... Is uh, probably not far from where he's been all week out in California. You know uh, what he's got out there right now with him? That fuck money. That's what I call it. And he's going to just throw it all over the place. Do you have an ATM here? If you were on Twitter yesterday, it was kind of a wild ride. Peter Gammons is an asshole. After the tweets about Garrett Cole, he's tweeting about fucking Saudi Arabia. He's on drugs. And he retweeted the president. He retweets the president's tweet about don't. Believe any story you you read about anonymous sources. So what is going on All with right, this guy? Can, can you tell me if Peter Gammons has ever had a drinking problem? Can That's you type good. in Peter Gammons drinking problem? Yeah. Mm, oh, he was arrested, arrested on, on marijuana. marijuana and gun charges. Was, but no, is that, that can't be him. That's a different. <laughs> no, it is. It's not Peter. No, Gammons. come on. Oh my god. Wow, he had a oh, damn, a half pound of hydroponic. Half pound of hydro. Comic. And a oh, no. nine millimeter. Damn, what kind of? I want to fucking. What hang the out. fuck is Gammon doing? A, money, what was he a movie on Peter Gammon? Yeah, they did fucking Breaking Bad. <laughs> what are you wearing a red shirt for? To That's pay homage to who? It's freezing to in the here. dead. Yeah, the dead, the dead socks, the dead like, socks, baby. Okay. But underneath, you got porched, you got porched. Yeah, we'll, yeah, I miss you guys. we'll get this out of the way here real quick. Uh, Chris had a tummy ache last week. I re- thought I had the flu. He was really oh. sick, and I'm not. I'm not. Christian's like, I can't get you. Look, we we're literally six inches from each other, and I'm not at the point in my life where I'm risking getting whatever the hell you had. So because you're getting older, we're, right? And your your immune system doesn't work as well as us youngins. You were the one that was sick last week, okay? So. Yeah, <laughs> didn't, didn't take one antibiotic, and look at me, I'm fucking flying. It took you a week to get over it, where I was a f- normal functioning now. person, and that would have had an antibiotic, would have been no, not, you didn't knocked out. R- Dude, you, first of all, you were like, oh, I got a 112 degree fever, I probably have strep throat, oh, which, yeah. and I'm which, dead. which following the news recently could lead you to have mononucleosis, you know, I thought so. thought I did have mono. Yeah. I found so. out my wife had mono in high school. What does that say about her? Oh, my God. 
God. Jesus, help us all. Did you hear the Minko uh, update when that was all going on with Sam Darnold? <laughs> no, what did he do? Well, back to you guys. Sam Darnold has mono. Mm. In other news, Jets quarterback Sam well, Darnold not, has no, mono. Back to you guys. Nothing else. And I sounded like Mike Francesa there, so I do want to say um, a big F you to your cousin, Sam. Because he likes to trigger me, and I don't know. I think he was being serious last night, but he said, I'm like Mike Francesa when, on the podcast. Oh, my God, Jesus. That anyone who disagrees with me, I say is an idiot, <laughs> whatever. I'm like, Christian is uh, Francesa. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, Christian's Francesa. Okay. Right, here we go, both of you disagreeing. Uh, yeah. No, you're right, you're right. You're, you're the right. miserable prick. Hashtag who, trigger uh, Travis over uh, here. Travis and Strump's going. Uh, Travis. <laughs> All right, deep to left, just drums gate. Oh, there goes. All right, let's get back on track. Here. All right, but I just want to say, Travis, track, I'm going to DM you. We're, we're going to start our own show. All right. If he's truly hurt, then yeah, this is this is going to be it. Well, here's why you kind of, I kind of lean towards him maybe being hurt. Is the Yankees acquired? Uh, I don't know. I don't want to butcher his name. I'm going to try to say it correctly. Mike Touchman, Talkman from the Rockies today. I know you're saying Touchman's uh, an outfielder. Uh, Boone, um, como se llama? What the hell am I thinking? A bird is a first baseman. How do the two correlate? Well, it correlates that uh, Bird or Voigt would have been an extra bat on the bench with Hicks being injured. Right. Now you bring in this guy. Right. And, you know, Boone says that it's likely he could break camp with the team. So that means somebody that you thought previously was going to break camp isn't breaking camp. Now, is that Bird? Is that Voight? Is that even... Sorry, Ryan. Is that even Tyler Wade? What did you just say? I don't know. My wife has a thing for Luke Voigt. So does mine. Oh boy. Right. My wife has a thing for first baseman. First, it was Tyler Austin. Mine just has a thing for bold baseball players. He's not bald. Luke Voigt is bald. Luke Voigt is not bald. He has like a mohawk. Oh, type. that's right. Because, oh, yeah. Well, she doesn't know that because I wonder if she's right. Where, he but looks he, bald. he shaved down where his hat is. He shaved down where his hat is. Yeah. Yeah. Down where his cup is. He shaved. Why? See, so you took it there. I did. I'm that kind of guy. We'll leave that one alone. Um, what jersey are you wearing? Nine, number ninety nine. Number ninety nine. Ninety nine. I only own one jersey and I didn't even buy it. Yeah, they always win when I wear this. Why don't you tell? Why don't you tell fans who gave you that jersey? You, bitch. That one. Hey, listen. Real nice. But see what I, I do? Nice things for him. I give him an official Alex Rodriguez jersey, and he calls me a bitch. Hey, you can't wash that shirt. No, I wash until it. they go on a losing streak. No, it works. It's just me wearing it. I don't know. I've washed. I it. wouldn't wash it. All right, I won't. In high school, I wore the same socks. Yeah, but every that single game that without was washing because it. Because you were a dirty. Did anybody see right? Kenny Powers line today? Did he pitch? <laughs> I'm telling you why the move happened. Don't... I don't give a shit. Sometimes I don't need to know why. Sometimes I just need you to talk to me. I am talking to you. I'm telling don't you run why. run away from your feelings. I'm telling you why it happened. What kind of a hotel is this? I need to fix this fucking chair. Hey, guys. This is Brian Hoke from MLB.com. Just wanted to congratulate you on 100 episodes. That's Really impressive. Nice round number. Uh, congratulations again, and keep on going. Um, see you at the ballpark soon, I hope. Episode 100. So let's go right to our interview with the voice of the New York Yankees, one Mr. John Sterling. Kristen Christian of the NYY Sports Talk on with John Sterling, the voice of the New York Yankees. John, how you doing this afternoon? Well, marvelous. It's a beautiful day, and... Um... In just a few days, I'm leaving for spring training, so um, I'm very up at the moment. Well, that's good to hear. We're all excited for the 2019 season to begin. Uh, your first season with the Yankees was in 1989. You've been with the club over 30 years now. Uh, you've seen it all. The Yankees have won five World Series in that time. Uh, I know it might be hard to go through all those memories, but is there one game that really stands out to you that you've called out of all the games that you've called? Well, you are right. It's impossible to pick out. Um, I haven't missed a game in my Yankee 30 years. <laughs> Which so, is absolutely you know, incredible. Had a, you know, and in, in, uh, in, the, in the Tory era, 
um, Joe managed 12 years and they made the playoffs 12 years. Well, that's a lot of big games, you know, when you, but anyway, to get to your question, to give you a, a good answer, um, I always cite the three games in Atlanta in 96 in the World Series, down 0-2, um, an Atlantan writer who I knew very well, Mark Bradley, uh, wrote an article, don't forget the Braves had won in 95, and he had written an article when the Yankees got to town that they were really not playing the Yankees of 96, they're playing the Yankees of 1927, and this uh, Atlanta Braves team could be called the greatest team in baseball. Uh, so the World Series, in effect, was over. And um, so the Yankees had to win a game, and they did. And now it's two games to one, and they're down 6 nothing in the sixth in game four and get three, and then Layridge ties it with three in the eighth, and the Yankees shocked the Braves. Uh, they won in the 10th or 11th inning. And... Um, and the final game in Atlanta, it was Pettit beating Smoltz one nothing, and um, it, it, you, you go on and on and on. But I always think of those three games as the three most exciting, greatest games in a row. And then, of course, uh, Joe Torrey's brother gets the the heart transplant on the off day, Friday. And on Saturday night, the Yankees win the World Series in Yankee Stadium. <laughs> Those were pretty good games. John, I was listening to you on the radio during those games as a as a young kid, muted the TV and had you on the radio for those. Uh, so I was right along with you. But like you said, you haven't missed a game in 30 years. Um, so you've seen a lot of games, a lot of different teams. I'm sure it's easy for you to pick out a handful of Yankees that have always been exciting to to call a game for any opposing players that stand out to you that you've always um, been excited for to call a game? Oh, yes. Um, first of all, Boston had their great three and four hitters, David Ortiz and Manny Ramirez. And in Seattle, um, Edgar Martinez just tortured the Yankees. So, um, no, I've seen, obviously, you, you broadcast every game. Also, didn't miss a game with the Hawks and Braves in the 80s in Atlanta. So, really, it's 38 years. Um, well, I've seen a lot of great players. And also, I've well, I was raised in New York as a child and uh, immediately became a basketball, baseball, football, hockey fan. And I love seeing the visiting players come in. Oh, I rooted for the New York teams, but I love to see the visiting players and the greatness of the visiting players that would come into the garden or to, you know, Ebbets Field, Polo Grounds, and Yankee Stadium. So I've always loved the, uh, the, uh, the other players as well. Well, John, uh, what the Yankee fans love about you is your home run calls. They've become iconic. Uh, the first one was uh, Burn Baby Burn, if we're not mistaken. Where did that come from? Was that something that you had planned out if Bernie got a big hit in a certain game? Or was that just like oh, a no. spur of the moment thing that came to you? No, they're all, they all were spur of the moments uh, until this thing, and I, I'm happy about it, became a cottage industry. And you have to do something for every one. But in, in the beginning, it, it just was certain players, uh, Bernard King, uh, Dominique, of course, with the Hawks. And, um, and then when Bernie, uh, I, I don't know why I said it, burn, baby, burn. And it caught on and that he loved it. And, um, and that was kind of the beginning of it with all the Yankee names. When the Yankees sign a new player, just to piggyback that, it's like, the thing that the fans ask, the very first question they ask is what John Sterling's home run call is going to be for that new player. And you get Did, you get a hundred different uh, guesses as to what it's going to be, and you always surprise us somehow. It, did you like? Did you ever think that it would take off and be this major thing inside uh, the Yankee universe amongst the fans? Oh, of course not. I mean, I it just happened. I said what I said. Um, I was doing a game in Atlanta. Excuse me. And um, I was on TV, and Atlanta was a double deck stadium. So the ball was always, you know, measured against the stands. In other words, if the ball was going out, you knew it because there they, they weren't any open spots. And um, Dale Murphy was up, and, and Doc Gooden of the Mets threw a breaking ball and hung it. And uh, so I said, breaking ball. And you knew that Murphy was going to hit it, and he hit it. And I said, you know, it is high, it is far, it is gone. It just came out of my mouth. 
So as did Burn Baby Burn and and um, the Giambino and all that nonsense. And uh, they all caught on, and I'm eternally grateful to the fans for for enjoying it and liking it. And it's become, as I say now, now you know you have to say, well, what are you going to say for Chulewitzki? What are you going to say for LeMayhew? And um, so I have to come up with something. Do you have a favorite of all the ones that you've come up with? You know, I don't know if it's a it's a favorite, but I know the most uh, the ones that I've heard the most are you know like a bomb from a rod and and Robbie Cano, don't you know, and uh, things like that. They, they, those you hear all the time. Well, John, you've been the voice of the best franchise in all sports for 30 years. Uh, again, might be a difficult question for you to, to come up with an answer for, but what would you say is the most humbling moment of your professional career with the New York Yankees? Uh, I was so excited when I got the Yankee job. And I had done the Braves now for five years, but I was like the junior member of the of the four man group, great group: Ernie Johnson, Skip Carey, Pete Van Weeren. But now it was my team and my game. And uh, the first game I did was ex- exhibition game with Jay Johnstone at West Palm against the Braves. The Yankees were then in Fort Lauderdale. Now I'm I'm not sure I I know what you mean by humbling. Uh, it might have been after the Yankees won the World Series in '96. Now you're in a car going up Broadway and you're hearing millions of fans do your calls <laughs> and the, and the cops who are walking along the side of doing all the calls. Well, I guess that was pretty humbling. I'd say so. In your career, as you mentioned, uh, you know, you, you've done MLB, NHL, uh, NBA and, and, you know, some college football in there. Do you ever wish you could go back and do some of those other sports again? Or once you settled into the Yankees, you never even thought back to, to those other sports? Oh, no, I did, a, I did a Nets game this year. Yes asked me to fill in on a Nets game, and I loved it. I got all excited about doing basketball again. But um, as far as looking back, I'm, you know, every one of us looks back on your life and say, gee, I wish I had done this. Or when I wish I had done that. I was telling someone about a college choice that I made and I made the wrong choice. And if I had gone to this place, well, and then we both laughed and, and said, well, it's kind of worked out. So, so (laughs) so I don't look back, you know, I'm amazed that it's worked out the way I'll tell you how good it's worked out. I think I'll leave you with this. Um, I read a book on the making of high noon. And so they went into the, the uh, Gary Cooper's life. And in the early 30s, when he was becoming a star, he made, just by luck, he made three fabulous movies that will last for all time. And Tom Hanks, who's probably the greatest actor of our generation, who not only does all these great movie parts, but everyone is different. He becomes a different character every time. And he mentioned about Gary Cooper's three movies that he made almost in a row. And he said, any actor would love to have any one of those credits. So what I'm going to tell you is how lucky I am, how fortunate I am. I've had great jobs in this business, let's say for the last 55 years. And um, any broadcaster would have loved to have had um, the jobs. I'm not patting myself on the back. The jobs themselves were big jobs. I mean, I was very young. I did a wild talk show in Baltimore on radio, and then it went to TV as well. And then I got the the uh, MCA job, sports director, and I was doing all these play-by-play sports as well as the talk show. And then I went with the Nets uh, for a couple of years and to Enterprise Radio, which only lasted nine months, talk show, and the uh, Washington Bullets. And then I landed the job in Atlanta, and I did a talk show for a year, and then I did the Hawks and Braves for eight years, and that led to the Yankee job. So um, any one of those credits would be a very good broadcasting credits. And uh, so I've been very fortunate. So I know it's a long answer. I forget what your question is. The answer was so <laughs> damn long. But, but um, anyway, I've been very, very fortunate and very happy about it. Well, John, we can't thank you enough for uh, spending a few minutes with us here on this Saturday afternoon. Uh, we believe it's next Saturday, right? You and Susan will be broadcasting the first yeah. uh, spring training game of 2019. You'll be in Fort Myers for the Yankees and Red Sox. Yes, as a matter of fact, exciting stuff. Oh, I didn't even think of it. A, a <laughs> week from today, and then um, in Port Charlotte against the Rays a week from tomorrow, 
And uh, so we'll have kicked off the exhibition season. So just like everyone else, I'm very excited about baseball. The Yankees have within themselves, within the clubhouse right now, a team that's good enough to go all the way. Now, I, I'd be lying to you if I told you I knew they were going all the way. The Red Sox can do that. Houston can do that. And over in the other league, you know, you have teams like the Dodgers and, and Cubs and almost every team in the National League East. So, but anyway, that's the fun of it. We'll find out what happens when, when it happens. And by the way, no matter how many shows you listen to, uh, how much MLB you listen to, Internet, uh, no one knows what's going to happen. So it'll be a surprise for all of us. All right, John, thank you very much for uh, doing the interview, and uh, we'll be looking forward to listening to you and uh, Susan call the Yankee games in 2019. Thanks, John. Well, bless you. Thank you very much.